Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the medical condition known as multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 or MEN1. So what is MEN1? Well, MEN1 is actually a rare heritable disorder that predisposes individuals to tumors in three particular locations in the body, the pituitary, the parathyroids, and the pancreas. Now there are actually a few different uh, MEN uh, types of medical conditions. MEN1, we mentioned, involves the pituitary, parathyroid, and pancreas. MEN 2A and 2B involve other organs, and we'll talk about those uh, conditions in another lesson. Now, MEN 1 is also known as Wormer's syndrome, and the tumors that occur in these individuals are generally benign, but not always, and we'll talk about uh, some of the, uh, the consequences of some of these tumors a little bit later. And MEN 1 is uh, the condition of MEN1 is due to a mutation on chromosome 11. So I always like to think about MEN1, the, the number one, think about uh, chromosome 11, uh, that might help you uh, try to remember MEN1 is on chromosome 11. Now, MEN1 is an autosomal dominant um, condition and men, the MEN1 gene is affected. And again, MEN1 gene is located on chromosome 11. And the way to remember which organs are affected in MEN1 is by the mnemonic three Ps. And you can think of three, you can think of one, MEN1, so one plus one plus one. And you can think of the other two ones coming from chromosome 11. So one plus one plus one equals three, so three Ps. And those three Ps are pituitary, parathyroid, and pancreas. Now, what are some of the signs and symptoms of MEN1? Well, it all has to do with those three organs that are affected. And the first one we're going to talk about is the parathyroids. And in fact, primary hyperparathyroidism can occur in these patients. Now, hyperthyroidism simply means that there is an excess amount or too much parathyroid hormone in these patients. And it's due to parathyroid tumors. Typically, there are multiple parathyroid tumors in these patients. And the parathyroid organs are... There's usually four of them, and they are located on the posterior side of the thyroid. And when these uh, parathyroids enlarge, um, in the case of MEN1, they can start to produce too much parathyroid, parathyroid hormone, and you can get this par primary hyperparathyroidism. And in fact, primary hyperparathyroidism is the most common manifestation of MEN1. And it has almost a 100 percent penetrance by age 40 to 50. So by the time patients with MEN1 reach their 40s, almost all of them will be affected with primary hyperparathyroidism from uh, multiple parathyroid tumors. Uh, typically, uh, uh, primary hyperparathyroidism and parathyroid tumors can start to present in um, as early as the age of 20s. And in fact, um, if you see a patient with primary hyperparathyroidism, it's good to check to see if they have MEN1 as 1 to 18% of patients with primary hyperparathyroidism actually have MEN1. And some of the symptoms of primary hyperparathyroidism is really due to the excess amount of parathyroid hormone. Excess amount of parathyroid hormone can cause an increase in uh, blood calcium levels, and it can actually um, lead to nephrolithiasis or uh, kidney stones because of the excess amount of calcium, and it can lead to bone disease. The parathyroid hormone can cause a leaching of the calcium from the bone, and you can get too much um, calcium and actually have issues with the bones as well. Now, the next organ that's affected in MEN1, think of the three Ps, the next one is the pituitary, and it can lead to pituitary adenoma. And here is a scan of an individual with a pituitary adenoma. This You can see this very enlarged pituitary here. Now, the pituitary adenoma can occur in about 15 to 60 percent of MEN1 patients. And the lactotroph um, variety of pituitary adenoma is the most common. So a 
pituitary adenoma mostly made up of a, prolifer a proliferation of lactotrophs is the most common. Uh, multiple pituitary tumors are rare, so it's usually just one large tumor. Macroadenomas are more common than microadenomas. So macroadenomas means that the tumor is larger than one centimeter. And some of the symptoms from a pituitary adenoma have to do with the cell type of um, proliferation of the pituitary. So we've talked about lactotrophs being the most common variety of uh, pituitary adenoma. And the lactotrophs produce prolactin. So we get symptoms of hyperprolactinemia. Increased prolactin can lead to amenorrhea in women and galactorrhea in other patients. And it can also lead to erectile dysfunction in men. So par prolactin can cause a lot of different symptoms itself. And it simply relates back to there's a large uh, amount of lactotroph cells in the pituitary that are producing a lot of prolactin and it's going to cause a lot of these symptoms. The next organ that is affected is the pancreas and it can lead to pancreatic islet cell tumors. Now these pancreatic islet cell tumors are typically functional and um, what I mean by functional is that they actually produce hormone. One third of patients typically have functional pancreatic islet tumors. Now these tumors and their resultant hormones that are produced can lead to life-threatening consequences. And insulinomas can occur. Insulinomas simply mean that it's a tumor of beta cells that produce insulin. About 10% um, of men one patients can have insulinomas and about um, around the second to fourth decade of life is when insulinomas typically present. Now, the tumors not, can not only synthesize insulin, insulin, but they can also synthesize multiple other hormones. Now, there's a condition known as Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, and this syndrome can occur in about 60% of patients with MEN1, and is due to a gastrinoma. So uh, the, these uh, tumors can actually synthesize and produce gastrin hormone, and it can cause other symptoms as well. Now, some of the symptoms um, of these pancreatic islet cell tumors include hypoglycemia because of the excess amount of insulin. So now that we know the signs and symptoms of MEN1, how do we actually diagnose and treat MEN1? Well, in order to diagnose, a lot of times it's a clinical diagnosis. So that means that in a patient, if you see at least two primary MEN1 tumors, so at least two of the three Ps, you can clinically, clinically diagnose them with MEN1. Or a family history of a usually first degree relative with MEN1 and this patient has one of the MEN1 tumors, you can usually say, okay, this it's highly likely that the patient has MEN1. Now you can also do germline MEN1 DNA testing. You can check for mutational analysis to actually check the MEN1 gene. This is a little bit more specific to say that, okay, this patient has um, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. So once we've diagnosed MEN1, how do we treat it? Well, it's all about treating the consequences of the effects on those three organs, the par parathyroid, the pituitary, and the pancreas. So with patients with uh, issues with their parathyroid, with primary hyperparathyroidism, we can uh, suggest uh, parathyroidectomy, so removal of some of the uh, parathyroid glands, or you could use uh, sinicalcid, which is a parathyroid hormone inhibitor. Now, with issues um, with regards to a pituitary adenoma, if the adenoma is very large and it's causing other symptoms like visual symptoms due to compression of the optic chiasm, surgery may be needed to reduce the size of the pituitary. There, um, with regards to the hyperprolactinemia, dopamine agonists like cabergoline and bromocryptine can be used. Dopamine is an inhibitor of uh, prolactin synthesis and release, so Cabergoline and bromocryptine can be used to uh, treat the hyperprolactinemia. And with regards to the pancreatic related tumors, surgical excision can be employed. Uh, with regards to Zollinger Ellison syndrome, uh, certain uh, proton pump inhibitors can be used due to the excess amount of gastrin that's produced. So 
any of the um, proton pump inhibitors, like any drugs that end with uh, prazole, pentoprazole, for instance, they can be used to treat any um, any symptoms with regards to Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.